Hello everyone, my name is Michael. I work for a San Francisco Public Library and today we're going to go over Google Sheets. So the agenda for today is I'm going to go over what is Google Sheets, where to access Google Sheets, storage limits of Google Sheets, how to navigate the Google Sheets uh, web portal, how to create, save, and share a, a spreadsheet, how to enter data, how to insert, delete rows and columns, how to use basic formulas, how to create a chart, and how is Google Sheets kind of similar to or different with uh, Microsoft Excel. So Google Sheets, what is Google Sheets? Google Sheets, it's a spreadsheet program kind of developed by Google. So it is very similar to Microsoft Excel if you've ever used that before. So if you know how to use that one, uh, there are a lot of similarities and there are some differences between the two platforms. Uh, it is Google Sheets, it is cloud-based. So all your spreadsheets are stored on your Google Drive account. So you would have to have a Google account. If you do not have one, you could sign up for free with Google. You could sign up for like a Gmail account if you like. If you prefer not to do that, you could sign up with your existing email address and you could have a Google account. And that will be your login information and you will get 15 gigabyte limits for your Google Drive account. So this is shared um, across all platforms of Google. So if you have, let's say, if you use Google Photos, you store photos in your Google Photos account, those photos are stored on your Google Drive account. And that counts towards your 15 gigabytes if you selected uh, um, the setting of uh, like um, original quality. But if you have, let's say, uh, Google Docs or Google Slides, you use those, then that counts towards your 15 gigabytes as well too. And Google Sheets can be accessed through the web browser or an app on your smartphone. So I will go over today, today how to access uh, Google Sheets on a web browser, but if you prefer, you could use Google Sheets on your smartphone as well too. You would have to download the app from the appropriate store. So if you have, let's say an Android device, then you could download it from the Google Play Store. If you have uh, Apple iPhone or iPad, you could download the app from the Apple App Store. And you could kind of do Google Sheets on your device as well too. But the screen is a lot smaller and you might not have access to all the available features as you would on the web browser version. So there are a couple of ways of getting to Google Sheets. If you go to your browser, you could type in either the first address here, sheets.google.com or uh, google.com slash sheets. Or if you're familiar with um, the Google products, there is a, another way of accessing um, Google Sheets as well too. And I'll show you that today. Okay, so right now I'm on the Google homepage. So if you're familiar with Google, on the far right-hand side of the screen near the top, there are three or there are nine kind of squares near the top and you could kind of hover over them. It says Google Apps. If you click on that, it will kind of give you like a drop down menu of all the available features of Google. And you see there's Google Photos, uh, Chrome and Docs and there's Sheets right here as well. You can always go to the address bar and type in a, like Google Photos as well too. Okay, so I'm already logged in to my account. Hello everyone, my name is Michael and I work for the San Francisco Public Library. And today we're gonna to go over Google Sheets. So the agenda for today is I'm gonna to go over what is Google Sheets, uh, how to access Google Sheets or where to access Google Sheets, storage limits of Google Sheets, 
how to navigate the Google Sheets web portal, how to create, save, and share a spreadsheet, how to enter data into your spreadsheet, how to insert, delete rows and columns in your spreadsheet, how to use basic formulas, how to create a chart, and how uh, are Google Sheets and Microsoft similar and different. So Google Sheets, what is it? Google Sheets, it is a spreadsheet program developed by Google. So you could uh, create spreadsheets within this platform. It is very similar to Microsoft Excel. So if you've ever used Microsoft Excel before, there are a lot of similarities and there, there are some differences and I'll go over that later on today. So Google Sheets, it is cloud-based. So all your spreadsheets are stored on your Google Drive account and you have 15 gigabyte limit in your Google Drive account. And, and also, since it is stored in your Google Drive account, uh, all of the various platforms in Google, they share that. So if you use Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Photos, all of those share your storage limits as well. So all of those count towards your 15 gigabyte limit. And you would have to have a Google account to use Google Sheets. So if you do not have one, you could sign up for one. You could always sign up for a free Gmail account if you prefer. If not, you could always sign up for a Google account using your existing email address somewhere else. And that will give you access to the Google platform and Google Sheets. And Google Sheets can be accessed through the web browser or on an app on your smartphone or tablet. So if you have an iPhone or an iPad, you could go to the Apple App Store and download Google Sheets. If you have an Android device, uh, you could go to the Google Play Store and download Google Sheets. And then you could view Google Sheets. You could kind of make minor edits in Google Sheets, but then you might lose some features on there versus like, a, like the web browser version. And I will go over how to access Google Sheets on the web browser today. So there are a couple of ways of accessing Google Sheets in your web browser. Uh, as you can see on the screen right here, there are two addresses. So you could type these addresses into your browser and they will bring you to the Google Sheets homepage. But if you're familiar with like kind of like the Google products, then there's an another way of accessing the Google Sheets platform as well too. And I will go over that today as well. So if you're on the Google homepage, you will kind of see kind of like the search bar right here in the middle and on the far right hand corner near the top, there are kind of nine dots or squares. It depends on how you view it. So this gives you the access to Google apps. So if you hover over it, you can see it says Google apps and you click on it, a drop down menu should kind of show up and it will list all the available Google apps. As you can see, there's Google Photos, Google Shopping, Google Docs, and Google Sheets right here. So you can access Google Sheets through this way as well, or through the addresses I gave you earlier into your address bar in your browser. So I'm gonna click on Google Sheets. And it's, it's gonna bring you to Google Sheets. Give me a second. Okay, so right now you should be seeing kind of like the very beginnings of the Google Sheets. So on the screen right here, there are a couple of things you should pay attention to. The first thing is the template gallery. So for instance, if you're in a rush or you want like a pre-made uh, spreadsheet for your work or your job or your daily life, then the template gallery would be the best thing because these uh, spreadsheets are already made for you. So all you have to do is kind of make edits, add your data into it, then you can have a very nice looking spreadsheet. And I'm, I'm gonna click on the template gallery option right here. It's gonna expand it. And you, as you can see, there's a lot here. So there's some for personal, let's say to-do list, annual budget, monthly budget. There's a calendar as well. If you scroll down, there's some stuff for work. So if you wanna create like an invoice, timesheet, let's say expense report. And if you scroll down, there's more like project management, and at the very end, there's some for education. So if you're a teacher, you could use this pre-made as a spreadsheet for attendance, for a grade book, or if you're a student, assignment tracker. So it, it depends on your needs. So these are all pre-made and you just, all you have to do is just click on it and it'll open up into your browser and you can add your data into it. But for today, I'm gonna create a brand new 
spreadsheet. So I'm gonna go back, give me a second. Okay, so right now, as you can see, near the bottom half of the page right here, it says today. And these kind of are, they are your previous uh, spreadsheets. So if you've uh, created any spreadsheets in the past, they will live here as well. And if anyone has shared a spreadsheet with you, they will live here as well too. So it's, it's mostly, um, you could kind of arrange the order of it. So if you go here, it says owned by anyone. So these spreadsheets are owned by me or anyone that's shared with me, or I could select owned by me or not owned by me. And you can kind of view like, what are the spreadsheets that are shared with you that were created by someone else? And it will let you know when was this uh, spreadsheet last opened. So like this one, I just opened it at 12.44 PM. And you can kind of sort it as well too, sort options, last opened by me, last modified. So it depends on how you want to view this list. So I'm going to create a brand new spreadsheet today. So I'm going to hit on the blank option near the left-hand side right here. It's kind of like an icon with like a plus symbol and it says blank on the bottom. So I'm going to click on that. And right now you should be seeing a brand new empty spreadsheet on your screen right now. So this is gonna be your work plane. So everything you do in a spreadsheet is gonna be here. So the first thing I'm gonna go over is you should name your spreadsheet. So if you go to near the top, top left-hand corner, you should say untitled spreadsheet and you should say renamed. So if you use your mouse, you click on it, you'll highlight it and you erase the name and you give it your own name. So I'm gonna say budget. So today I'm gonna to try to create like a quick uh, spreadsheet for your daily budgets. So, and I will show you how that kind of works with the available features as well too, and how to kind of navigate the platform. So my name is changed already. So this spreadsheet is called budget and that's the first step. So next, uh, like I went over earlier, this is an online platform. So all your spreadsheets are saved to your Google Drive account. So you would have to have an active internet connection. And for you to see if it's already saved, there is this icon near the top left-hand corner right here. Let me see if I can make it bigger. Okay. So as you can see right here, I'm hovering over it. It is kind of like a cloud icon and there is like a check mark in the middle. So this will tell you that if your a document is saved or not. And if you click on it, it says all changes saved to Google Drive account or your Google Drive. So that's a good sign. So next I'm gonna go over um, this fe feature right here. So it says last edit was a second ago. So every time you make a change in your Google Sheets, a, a spreadsheet, then it will tell you when was this at last updated. So I'm gonna type in something here, hello. So it's gonna change right here. And if you click on it, it says open version history. So this will be helpful if you wanna save like certain versions of this. And if you wanna go back to it later on, or if you wanna revert back to it, then it will be very helpful. And I'll go over this uh, later today. So, so next I'm gonna go over the file option right here near the top left hand corner. So if you click on it, there are a lot of options on here. So for instance, I went over uh, how to create a new spreadsheet in your Google Sheets account. But then let's say you already have a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet on your computer on a flash drive somewhere and there's data in there already and you wanna work on it, but you don't have Microsoft Excel, which is kind of like a very similar version to Google Sheets. So you can always click open right here. And then once it says open, a screen should pop up. It's gonna ask you, where is this a spreadsheet that you wanna open? So you could select one of these options or you select upload then you could select select from file from your device. And then you would choose where would this Microsoft Excel file live and you will load it onto your account. So once you load it onto your account, it will be in your Google Drive account and it will be accessible through Google Sheets and you can make your edits like that or you can do changes edits, yeah. Okay, 
So that's kind of how you would kind of load your existing spreadsheets. But then if you don't have that and you just want to work in the platform, this is this spreadsheet is already automatically saved. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so next I'm gonna go over, so, so let's say you wanna make a copy of this. So if you, so since this is already saved to your Google Drive account, but you wanna make a, a copy for, for offline use or to send it to someone, then there are a couple of options right here. There is a, a download option. So if you go to file and go to download, then these are your options of downloading your spreadsheet into various formats. So you could download as a PDF, or you could download it as a Microsoft Excel file. Then you could open this file on a, a Microsoft Excel device or anywhere with Microsoft Excel as well. And if you prefer, you could email this file to someone as well too. And the other option is make a copy. So if you, you want two, ver two copies of this, the exact same copy, you could select make copy, and this will make an exact duplicate of this, and it'll live in your Google Drive account. Okay, so now I'm gonna begin creating a very quickly made spreadsheet. So I'm gonna create a spreadsheet for like budgets. So I'm gonna go over how to enter your data into here as well. So each of these square boxes, it is a cell. So your data lives in a cell. So as you can see, I typed in budget. This is one cell. So this is my data here and you could type in all different kinds of data in each of these cells as well. And on the left-hand side right here, you see numbers of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these are your rows. So if you click on it, it'll select row one, row two, row three, row four. And if you look at the top, you can see A, B, C, D, E, F. So these are your columns. So if you click on it, it will select the column. So sometimes you might hear your coworker or someone tell you there's information in a specific cell. So they would refer to the cell using these kind of rows and columns. So right now I've selected a cell. So it is in row six and then uh, column C. So this is six uh, C. So right now, you could kind of refer to how to kind of enter in your data. So next I'm gonna enter in my data. So let's say food, gas, utilities, and let's see, internet. and total. Okay, so I've entered these kind of categories on the left-hand side. Then I'm gonna go to here and let's say January, February, March. Okay. So now I kind of have like the basics of like my spreadsheet. So I'm gonna enter in my data into here. So food, let's say, let's say I want, uh, let's say 100, 200, 300, 400, or, well, that's not very realistic, so. So I'm gonna enter in more data right here. So 300, 200, 100, 40. Okay, so now I've entered in my data right here. So let's say, so now you might wanna know the total of the amounts that I've entered. So there are a couple of ways of doing that. So one way is uh, right here, I've entered like a section where it says total, and you can enter in like a function or formula to kind of calculate your total for you. So 
So give me a second. Okay, so now you you would kind of want to enter in like a formula. So how would you do that? You would select the cell right here and you would go to the more option right here. So this bar right here near the top is kind of like the commonly used functions that you might use on in your spreadsheet. So I'll go to the three dots right here. Then I'll look for this uh, symbol right here. It kind of looks, it, kind of, it should say function if you hover over it. So if you click on that, so these are all like the commonly used formulas that you might use in Google Sheets to help you calculate your uh, numbers. So the top right here, these are like the more commonly used. The bottom here, right here, these are, the, let's say the lessly used, but then if it depends on your needs. So if you're an engineer, you might use this, but uh, today I'm gonna go over the, the basics right here. So there's sum, there's average, there's count, max and minimum. So for example, here, I will wanna know like the total of my amount for January. So I'll click on sum and make sure to select the cell that you want the information in first. So I've selected the cell right here, B7, then I'll click on sum. And notice that there is a sum entered into the cell right here. So right now, this is kind of like my formula and in the middle it's empty. So I will have to select what I want the sum of so I'll select the first cell right here or for 100. Then notice that it changed. So there is a B2 entered next to the sum and I wanna know the total of the entire column. So I'll use my mouse and I'll scroll all the way down. I'm selecting multiple cells. And if you can see right here, it says sum B2 to B5. So it's gonna give you the total of these cells right here. So now the total of these is 650. So right now, this is uh, like a money amount. So it doesn't look very obvious. So I might wanna change this or change all of it. So I'll use my mouse. I'll click on the cell right here. I'll highlight all the cells right here and I'll change it to like kind of like a money format. And there is option right here, format as a currency. It's like a dollar sign. So if you click on it, it will change all the amounts to like the like currency format. So now it's kind of more obvious that it is like a money amount. So it is 650 for my January budget. So if you click on it, it says 650, but if you go up top near here, you could see the formula behind that uh, calculation and you can always change it in the future as well too. So now I have this, but let's say I want the total for February, February and March as well too. I could go the same route again. I could go to select func select the function here and select sum and that, that might work, but let's say I want it quickly. So if I click on the cell that I did use before and it has the function formula in here already, notice that there is a small a square box in your bottom right-hand corner. So if I click on that, I'll drag it over to the second cell and third cell. It will copy the formula to the, those cells as well too. So it will do the calculation as well for the next column and the next column. So now the next column total is 640 and the next column is 499. So now this is kind of like a shortcut of you kind of copying the formulas. So if you have like a lot, then that works as well too. Okay, so now you've kind of know how to use formulas. So this is the very first formula, but if you want to know something different, then you go back to the formula section right here, go back to the three dots, go to more, and then go to functions and click on that. And these are all the different ones. So I'll go over one more as well too. So let's say I want to know the average of my amount. So I'll type an average right here so you can know the average and I'll click on the cell right here. And I wanna know the average of January, February and March. 
So I've selected the cell right here. So I'll go back to the three dots right here and I'll look for functions right here. And I'll click on that. And these are my options. And I wanna know the average. So if I click on average, it entered in the average formula. And now I can select what do I want the average of. And I'll go here, I'll select the cells. And it's kind of similar to what I did before for the sum. So average between B2 and B5. And if I'm done, I hit enter. So now the average of January is 162 and 50 cents. And I want to do the same like before. I want to know February or March. Then I'll select the cell right here, the first cell with the formula. I'll see that there's a square box near the bottom right-hand corner. I'll click on that and I won't release my my finger from the mouse and I'll drag it over. So now it copied that formula to the two cells next to it. And now I have the average of these two uh, columns as well too. So that's kind of how you would use like a formula in a, a spreadsheet. So what I did was I took the cell and I went to the more option right here and I selected the functions and I selected one of these options. But once you get uh, familiar with the, how to enter in functions, then you don't have to do that. You could just do it manually. So I'll select the cell right here and I'll double click and my cursor is right here. And how you enter in like a formula, you enter in the equals sign. Then after that, you type in your uh, formula. So I'll type in sum and it'll kind of pre-populate like a list right here. And you can see there's a lot of sums, but I want the first sum. I'll click on that and it will kind of give me more information. I'll select the sum from the cells here as well too. So that's pretty much how you would use a formula. Okay, so next I'm gonna go over how to kind of freeze certain parts of your spreadsheet. So pretend that this is a long spreadsheet and you have to scroll, scroll down so if you scroll down, the very top part, the first row, it doesn't stick there. So you won't know like what's the information down here. So you might wanna freeze the first row. And that would be very helpful if you have like a lot of information. So if you go ahead, select the first row and you go to one of these right here. You go to view, then there's freeze, and it's gonna ask you which rows you wanna freeze. So I wanna freeze the first row. I'll click on one row. So now the first row right here it is frozen. So if I scroll down, notice that everything else is moving, but then the first row is not moving. So if you have like a lot of information on here, then you can still kind of see like what, uh, information is in that column. And the same goes for co the columns as well too. If you wanna freeze the first column, you could do that as well using the same uh, method. Freeze and then one column. Okay, so that's pretty much how you would freeze the first row of your spreadsheet. So next I'm gonna go over, uh, let's say, this doesn't look very good, right? So it looks all the same. I wanna change the coloring of the first row. So let's say I wanna change it to bold. So I'll select multiple cells, go to bold. I'll change the background color. Okay, so now it's kind of bright. So I'll select, I'll enter more information. So April right here. So, so let's say I want this formatting in April, but then I don't wanna re-select it from here. So there is option of kind of copying like um, like a, the format. So it is called paint format and is available here on the left-hand side. It's, it looks kind of like a paint roller. And if you hover over, it says paint format. So if I click on that, it's gonna, it's gonna copy whatever cell I've selected and it'll copy that format. So I didn't select the cell I wanted yet. So I'll go to here, it's the first cell. It is um, bolded, it, there's a red background to it. I'll click on paint format. So now it copied this format 
And if I click on the cell right here, no, notice that there is no red background. It is not bold. So once I click on it now, it copied the format from the first cell to the very last cell. And this is especially helpful if you do like a lot of formatting in the beginning and you change your, your spreadsheets and you don't want to do the formatting again in the future. So that's pretty much how you do that. So next, I'm going to go over how to kind of create a different sheet in your spreadsheet. So you have one sheet right here right now, but you have multiple spreadsheets in your kind of like your workbook. So if you go to the bottom right here, there are a couple of options on the bottom. So the plus sign right here is add sheet. So if I click on that, notice that it added a second sheet right now. And if I click on that again, you can add more sheets. So you have one sheet for um, a different category if you would like. So I'll go back to the first sheet. So if you click on here, it kind of looks like a hamburger. It says all sheets. So if you click on that, it'll let you see all the sheets available. So I only have three right now. So if you have like a lot, then it'll be more obvious here as well too. So now if you go to one of these sheets right here, if you click on the downward pointing triangle right here, if you click on that, it'll give you more options of what you could do with your sheet. So if you decide you don't want it, you click delete. If you like it, you want to duplicate it. You click duplicate, it'll make a copy of it. You copy this uh, spreadsheet to a new spreadsheet or existing spreadsheet, rename it, change the color. You can protect the sheet. So if you don't want anyone to kind of delete it, then you could protect the sheet. And since you could share this with someone else, you protect it and other people can't make changes to it. And I'll go over how to share the sheet later on today as well. And if you have like a lot of sheets here, you could click hide sheet. So it will still be here, but it just won't show up. So you won't have to go through a whole bunch of sheets. So let's say if you have 10 or 20 and you only use like five of them, you could hide the rest. So that's pretty much how you would add like another sheet to your, your, your spreadsheet. Okay, so next, so I'm gonna go over how to delete rows and columns. So right now I have April right here, but let's say I don't want it. So if I go here, I'll select E. And if you right click, you could delete this column. So delete column. So now that column's gone. So if I don't want a row, I'll select the appropriate rows that I don't want. Let's say I don't want row eight. So I'll right click and I will delete row. Or if you prefer not to delete it and you will just want to hide it because you might need it in the future, you click hide row. So now that row is gone and those, it says one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and nine. So the row is still there, but it's just hidden. So if you want it back, just click on it the the arrow pointing up and it'll give you that row back. Okay, so that's pretty much how you delete and add like a row. So if you wanna add more rows to, if you click up here, say I'll select C, I'll right click, insert one left, one right. So let's say, I'll do that. You insert that and you do the same for rows as well too. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over how to sort your information. So this is a small set of data, but let's say you have like a lot of information on here and you wanna sort it out. So if you go ahead, select the first cell up here, uh, 1A, and if you go to right here, let's see. You click on the, the three dots for more and it should give you the options right here. There is a create a filter option so go ahead and click on that. It's kind of uh, shown by like a, kind of like a, like a like a glass. So click on that. So now I've created kind of like the sorting option for these two uh, columns right here. But let's say I want all of them. So let me go back. I'll undo first. Okay. It's, and also I'd like to mention the undo option. So if you want to go to edit and undo. This will be very helpful if you like make a mistake and just go ahead 
and undo whatever you did, or you could do like a shortcut on your keyboard, Control Z. So now I wanna sort all of these. So I'll, I'll go ahead, select the first cell, and I'll select all of these cells right here. Then I'll go back to the three dots right here, of more, then I'll select create a filter. So now it kind of gave me the option of right here of sorting my information. It's kind of obvious from these three lines right here near the top. So I'll click on that and I could do sort. Sort A to Z, sort Z to A, sort by color. So let's say sort A to Z. Then now I'll go, go sort Z to A. So now it's gonna sort my data here and it, it might be helpful if you have like a lot of information, you wanna see your information in alphabetical order. So it depends on your needs. But that's pretty much how you would sort your information. So next I'm gonna go over how to create a chart from your information. So there are a couple of ways of creating a chart. So the easiest way would be to look for the chart option right here near the top. If you go through the bar right here, look for the chart option. So it's kind of obvious by like a square box and it, there's like a couple of lines through it. So insert chart. So go ahead and click that. So it's gonna pop up some information. So there should be like a blank chart right here. And there should be a chart editor option on the right hand side right here. And it's gonna default to a column chart under chart type. So it depends on what chart you want. If you click on the downward pointing triangle right here, you can select the appropriate chart and you can scroll through it. So, so let's say I want, let's see. So let's say I, I like a, a column chart. So I'll select column chart. So now if I scroll down, it's gonna ask you your, your data. So right now it is blank. So it doesn't know where to get your data from to create the chart. So I'm gonna go ahead, select the box with the plus sign right here, select data range and a pop-up should show up and it's gonna ask me where's my data. So I'm gonna erase that and I'm gonna select my data. So I want to create a chart of all of, let's see, one of this. Then notice it changed. So select data range A1 to B5. And I'll select okay. So now it changed. So the screen before it was empty. Now I have a chart right here. So the chart is from my utilities, internet, gas, and food for January. So right here, this is my chart. And there's not much information on here. So you might wanna add more to it. So if you go to customize right here near the right hand side, you can add chart um, access title, series legends. So go click on that chart title. So enter in monthly budget and that's gonna change on my chart. So let's say I want bold. And that's, and I want it in a different color. And that's pretty much how you create a chart and kind of customize it to your needs. And there's more options on the bottom right here, horizontal axis, vertical axis. If you have time, you could take a look and you could do like a, a little modifying and changing yourself. So that's pretty much how you could create like a basic chart of your data. I'm gonna click X and now I'll move the chart over. So now this chart is connected to the data set that I've selected earlier. So what if I wanna change it? So if I click on any of these cells right here with the data, let's say I change food to 200. So that's gonna change on my chart as well too. So let's say 1000. So that's gonna change. So it is connected. So another way of creating a chart is the explore option. So there is an explore option near the bottom right-hand corner right now. Uh, let me make it bigger. So it's kind of obvious by kind of like a box with like a star in it, this explore option, if I click on it, a screen should pop up and it'll give you some 
kind of suggestions on what you might do with your data in your spreadsheet. So you could change the formatting, you could ask information about the data, and it will kind of give you like an answer as well too. So it would give you kind of like a preview of what kind of charts you might want to do. So like this pie chart right here, this column chart right here, or this chart right here as well. So this is very helpful if you're on the go or you just want like a quick chart of your data. So let's say I want this chart right here. So all I have to do is click on it somewhere in the middle, I'll drag it over. Then that's gonna create this new chart for me in my spreadsheet right now. I could do the same for the others as well too. So let's say I have this chart and I like it. So I'll hit X. So now I have two charts on my spreadsheet right now. But let's say I have a lot of data on here and I don't like that. So I wanna move it to like a different spreadsheet. So if you click anywhere inside in your chart, there's a three dots near the top right-hand corner. Click on that. It'll give you more options. So you can edit your chart, delete your chart, download your chart, copy your chart, or move to own sheet. So I'm gonna select move to own sheet. So now notice that it's a lot bigger. It's in its own sheet. And if I go to the bottom left-hand corner, there's chart one right here. And my original sheet is sheet one. So it's no longer in sheet one. It's in a, a different, in its own kind of uh, space. Okay, that's pretty much how you would create a chart using the explore option. But the explore option is not just creating charts. There's more options in here as well too. Okay, so next I'm gonna go over kind of how to get like quick information about your data. So if you have a lot of information on here and you just want like a total or average of certain amounts, then you could do like what I did before using a formula to calculate it, or you could just highlight it. So if, you, if I want to know the information from these three cells right here, I will highlight it. And if you look on the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, let's see, I'll make it bigger. So right here, there is kind of like a total of it. So there's sum 340. So it, it kind of totaled up these three cells right here. If, you cl if I click on the downward pointing triangle right here, it'll give me kind of like the basic information about what my information is. So sum, average, minimum, maximum. So this is very helpful if you want to know certain amounts in your spreadsheet, but you don't want to do the calculations because maybe your boss is asking you how much is this for this time period, you can do that. You don't have to do the calculations. And all you have to do is select the cells in your spreadsheet and look to the bottom right-hand corner and it'll give you all of these basic information. Okay, so that's pretty much how you would kind of get quick information about your spreadsheet. So next, I'm gonna go over what you would do with your certain, your data. So for instance, so let's say you have a list of names in your spreadsheet in, all in one cell, but then you don't wanna kind of separate them manually. You wanna separate them automatically. So I'm gonna type in some names right here. So on the left side of the screen right here, I have two names. And they're a first name and last name in one cell. But let's say I want them in two cells because that might be easier for you to sort through. So you might want to sort it by last name instead of first name. So if I select it right here and I go to one of these options right here. Give me a second. I'll go to data. Then pretty much these are the options that you might want to choose to help you with um, editing your data. So there's this option right here. So split text to columns. So if I click on it, this screen should pop up. It says detect automatically and I'll click on it and I'll select space. So now it's separated my information in one cell to two cells. 
So now if I have a long list, I could sort it by first name or last name. And I'll do that again one more time. I'll select the second cell. I'll go to data and I'll go to split text to column. And I'll click on this and space. So now it split my information to two cells. So that's pretty much how